Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate each and every person that is here. And um, several announcements to make. First of all, uh, thanks to all those who did all this work, especially Bill Vickery, but all the people that were with him. Jim in the back there, he was here most of the day as well, uh, uh, cooking that chicken. We sold it all out. And um, we did very well with that uh, for the church. So that was a wonderful thing. And it was a wonderful thing for the town, I think. Uh, between the people that came and uh, waited in the hall for takeout and the people that came and sat down, I think it was a, a very successful event. And we are, um, after that, getting ready for the uh, new MISPA's uh, craft fair, which is next Saturday. And um, they have a quilt to raffle off, and you'll find it in the hallway after uh, church. You can see it out there. And... Uh, buy a ticket and you might win a, uh, a beautiful quilt which is found out there. And if you have any questions about the bazaar or anything, uh, you can talk to Christy or my wife Barbie and uh, they'd be glad to talk to you about that. Okay, are there other announcements we should be making? Yes, Lynn. Again, I want to reiterate a thank you to all of the wonderful helpers that we had last night. It was so successful because you were there and we managed to get all of our prep work done. So let me land on deck that we got it done and it's an hour and instead of so kudos. Thank you and thank you to the people that came and enjoyed. I want to let everybody know that this Friday from 6.30 to 7.30 we are having a family fun night. We are going to do a flashlight walk that will start outside the ramp here and you'll have to follow a glowing trail. Um, and then you'll collect little things along the way as you go. So if you're interested in doing that, you just need to show up at 6.30 on Friday night. Um, hopefully with some little ones, but I guess big ones are welcome to come too. Um, if you're interested in helping out, I'm looking for a couple of volunteers to help with that as well. So if you're around for maybe an hour, hour and a half on Friday night. I'd love some help. Just come and see me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now who else had, uh, Barbie? I just want to put in a plea for uh, help for next Saturday. Um, we need help setting up on Friday night and help uh, covering the tables. And then also, after it's over, we have an hour to unload everything um, because we have a funeral reception coming in an hour after. So um, if you can help at all, we would really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Leslie. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to read The Beacon or The Union Leader yet, my mother died um, Friday, um, September 23rd at the Birches in Concord. And I just wanted to let everyone know and thank everyone who uh, lent their support uh, during the last few months, and especially Woody, who was a faithful visitor and gave us much comfort. Um, the memorial service will be here October 10, Monday, October 10 of Columbus Day weekend at 11 o'clock and followed by a reception up at our house, uh, as my mother would have wished. Um, and so all are invited, of course. And again, thank you for all your support. Thank you. Her obituary is in this morning's um, Sunday news, and it's... Uh, Quite an obituary. I didn't realize your grandmother was from England. Wow, that was. My granddaughter. Yeah. No. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one that didn't know. <laughs> no, that she was a. That's a great family. Great family. And I understand she was a personal friend of Paul McCartney's. No, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> okay. Other announcements. Okay, we'll begin the service with our morning prelude.
We gather to worship the God of Abraham and Isaac, of Moses and the prophets, a God made who came in flesh uh, in the form of Jesus. And as we gather to worship, we begin with our opening hymn, which is number 723. response of reading is selection 42, number 42. <coughs> he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. He is King of kings. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Creed, and let us, uh, it's on the inside cover of our hymnals, let us read together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He is centered into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our scripture lesson is from the 25th chapter of Matthew. It is Jesus' final parable. We've preached on this quite a bit in the last couple of years because it's a major theme of the Presbyterian denomination um, in uh, the last few years, and it's a very worthy one. So here's Jesus' last parable uh, before he is arrested. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee, or thirsty and give thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcome thee, or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see thee sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it, To one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And then he will say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, When did we see thee hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to thee? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. They will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here ends our reading. So I'm going to invite any uh, of our Sunday schoolers to come up, and we'll talk a bit about communion. And uh, before, and while we're they're coming up, please take a moment, say good morning to those around you. <clears throat> Come right up at the table here so you can see. So we're going to talk a little bit this morning because you're going to have communion with us, right? Okay. Why do we do communion? Do you have any idea? Very simple answer to this. Jesus told us to. Jesus said, At the last supper he had with his disciples, his helpers, uh, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And when we share this meal together, I will say that, those words of Jesus, um, when we eat the bread. Now we have folks that are allergic to regular bread, and so we have gluten-free crackers. But that's what Jesus had at the last supper. After they had dinner together, he took out a loaf of bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to them, and he said, this represents my body, which is to be broken for you. He was about to be arrested and crucified. And then, in the same way, we have here grape juice, and we have wine. Now, at the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples, they had wine. But some folks can't drink wine because they have an allergy to it. It gives them a disease. So people can choose whichever they have. Uh, when we pass these trays. Now, if you have friends uh, that are, go to other churches, uh, every church celebrates communion. Uh, they do it a little differently in different churches. 
but it represents for us the last time Jesus had dinner with his disciples, and it reminds us that he is with us always, his spirit. And he said to do two things that we call sacraments, which is a big fancy word, which means promise. It's from the uh, word they used to use when somebody joined the Roman army. They had to take an oath of office to be a soldier. Sacramentum, that's in Latin. But that's where the word sacrament comes from. So we share this together, and we think about Jesus and what he taught us. So thank you. We'll see you after, uh, well, you'll be here, so we'll pass these around, and your folks, uh, your parents will help you take, take what is appropriate for you. Thank you. time for the sermon. Quiet, quiet. Well, I, I heard something interesting. You know how they have all these jokes about somebody walks into a bar and, you know, well, apparently the other day a fish walked into a bar and the bartender said, what do you want? And the fish croaked out, water, water. So that's today's joke. All right. Don't be gilly. Well, silly. I'm sorry. Well, I um, have started through what I'm calling a kind of an alphabet of faith. We got to see. Now, I probably should have talked about communion, and I will do that a little bit more here. But there are a lot of C words you could use. Christ is the obvious one uh, to talk about in a, a, a alphabet of faith. But I, I, we talk about Jesus every week. But uh, I actually saved using Christ for when I got the X, because I couldn't figure out what I was going to preach about as X, but X is the uh, Greek letter for Christ. Uh, so actually, people that put Xmas and then, you know, real devout Christians criticize them, that's perfectly appropriate. It's, it's Christ mess, right? Mass, and instead of writing out Christ, you put X. So it saves you a little ink or something. But uh, So... Uh, could have talked about church, but we do that all the time, too, because we are a part of the universal church, uh, the family of Christ, if you will. And today uh, is communion, Worldwide Communion Sunday. So all these things would be appropriate, and they kind of mix in here. How appropriate the message will be, I don't know, but uh, I have hope that it is being something to somebody. Um, uh, it is a sacrament, as I just told the kids, that Christ told us to do. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Um, it is celebrated in all churches uh, with different understandings of it. In the Protestant church, you know, that uh, a Roman Catholic priest started, Martin Luther, then he got kicked out for starting a new church. But most Protestant churches only have two Sacraments, two things that Jesus said to do that are kind of a ceremonial uh, type of activity. Uh, one is communion, and the other, of course, is baptism. Our Catholic friends uh, have a few more uh, that they put in there that are very worthwhile things to do, like confirmation and uh, um, uh, confessing your sins and being absolved of your sins, and we kind of think God can do that without uh, the help of those of us in the church. But it's not a big difference between us. We're all trying to follow, as we best understand it, uh, what Jesus came to show us God wants us uh, to do. Uh, and the word communion reminds us that when we celebrate this sacrament of the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist or communion, that we are communing, trying to come together with both God and with one another as part of the church. And on today, uh, they're celebrating this all over the world, worldwide uh, communion Sunday. And of course, those um, elements, the bread and the crackers that I showed you guys, and the, and the wine and the grape juice, represent the body and the blood of Jesus, who uh, after he was, uh, after they had the supper, he was arrested. He was taking, uh, taken off and put on trial, and he was killed on a cross. 
Uh, and as he was nailed to the cross in extreme pain, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we remember that when we don't uh, live up to what God expects us to do, he forgives us. And it's important to ask his forgiveness and to know that we receive it. However, I decided in the midst of all the C words that we could have used to, to talk a little bit about choice. Choice, because I think one of the keys to understanding the world is the doctrine, uh, theological doctrine, of free will, uh, which shortens up to choice. We make choices. Um, and uh, whether we take part in church or in communion or believe in Jesus uh, as somehow being God in human form, all human beings make choices in life. There's an ad on television <clears throat> that says, we make about 35,000 choices or decisions each and every day. That little, seems a little high to me, but we do make a lot of them. Um, uh, if you just walk into, uh, you make a lot more if you go to Market Basket as opposed to Sully's, right? I mean, you walk down these aisles, holy smokes. There's a lot of choices uh, that we make. Uh, that, that's just a small example of that. Every aisle of every store or going online and purchasing something, which people do, uh, and then it magically arrives at your house in a truck. Uh, but that's, you make a choice on what you decide uh, to do. <clears throat> make a choice if you're going out to dinner or eating at home. You make a choice if you're going to out to dinner, where are you going to go? Uh, if you're going to get pizza, where are you going to get it? Uh, what TV show you're going to watch? Uh, what books you're going to read, if you read? Uh, how do we spread our resources and spend our... Boy, that's a tough one. Um, how do we get our resources and what do we do with them? Now, our greatest resource is probably, <clears throat> well, probably time and talent. God gives us talents, abilities to do certain things that we can do and how do we use those talents? And the question of a time, of course, is a wonderful resource. We don't think about that. How do we spend our time? And... The question of the resources themselves, how do we get them? Especially you need some money, right, to pay the bills. I've gotten calls this week from several people who need help paying bills. In fact, I've got one lady. If anybody knows anybody, <laughs> anybody know anybody real wealthy? Uh, I've got a lady that lives in her car, and the car she's living in is just about shot, and she needs $2,500 uh, because the cars are also her house. She can get a little minivan for that. There's some good working order. So everybody knows anything, anybody that can help with that, let me know. Um, but um, how do we use the resources we have and how do we get them? Uh, and that includes uh, money and talents and time. And then uh, we make choices as best we can about relationships, who our friends are. What's the old saying? Uh, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family? I mean, that's true, but we have families. And uh, we, we try to work on those relationships, and what we do is making choices sometimes, um, even with strangers, strangers. Uh, lately, I've gotten several calls from people I'd never met just looking for help, uh, people I don't know at all. They're strangers. Now, in all these things, uh, and many more things that I didn't even uh, mention that you can think about, they are matters reflecting what we believe in, what is important to us in our lives. And the theological understanding of that, of course, is, is the term of free will. God creates us uh, to have free will. Now, we don't make every decision in our lives. Sometimes circumstances dictate what we do, and, uh, you know, we don't choose to get sick or we don't choose to lose our jobs or, you know, but God did create us to have basically free will. And the fact that we misuse free will, all you need to do is pick up the morning paper or turn on the radio or TV and you'll see that some people have misused it. This morning, I saw uh, an article in the Sunday News besides Jan's um, very moving uh, obituary uh, that Mr. Putin's threatening to use nuclear weapons in the Ukraine. And you think, uh, boy, I wish he didn't have any free will over there, but he seems to be uh, thinking about it. I can't even imagine that he would even think about that. But um, as Christians, we believe that God 
has guided us how to use free will uh, the right way uh, to make our choices based on the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus. Sunday school is looking this, this year especially at the Beatitudes, which really are right in the middle of the Sermon on the, right at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, which is the core teachings uh, of Jesus. Um, so it's an important thing to think about. How do we use our free will? Now, um, uh, we routinely should, and we do at, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, <clears throat> confess our sins because we recognize that we uh, so often uh, don't practice Jesus' teachings in our lives. And communion reminds us of our need to confess to God uh, the many times we have disappointed God and also um, ask for God's forgiveness, which he promises to always give us. So at the center of, of that, center of life, really, is the whole question of human free will. And then we have a perfect example of that in the last parable of Jesus. That was our scripture reading this morning. Matthew 25. Um, God's presence with the suffering uh, is emphasized in that parable. Those that are hungry, those that are poor, the sick, the prisoners, the refugees, these folks Jesus said, there am I in the midst of them. There am I. Um, but what do we do about that? If we can do anything about that, uh, some of these problems. Um, uh, that's free will or choice. It's up to us. Now think about this. When we decide to help, according to this parable, when we decide to help someone, Jesus is there with those we try to help. There he is. On the other hand, when we decide not uh, that we just can't help someone or we don't want to help someone or we're going to ignore someone that needs help, Jesus is there with those we choose not to help. It's kind of a sobering thought when you think about it. Uh, and we can't, obviously. We can't help everybody in the world that we just don't have the resources to do that unless we all came together. I think the world has the resources, but try to get the world together. It's hard enough to get, uh, sometimes get a family together on the same page, much less try to do it worldwide, but you try. So it's important to think about these things and to respond as best we can understand it to God's call. It's always a choice, and sometimes we ponder from where it comes. So I would just kind of close with these brief words of a man who made a choice uh, and it's not that clear a choice. It wasn't like he went to a Billy Graham rally and went up front. Uh, uh, it, it, but it was a choice. And he was a great man. Dog Hammarskjöld, his name was. Secretary General, one of the early ones of the United Nations, died in a plane crash uh, going to the Congo, I believe, to uh, try to help people there in the midst of a, 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 a crisis. And he wrote these words. I don't know who or what put the question. I don't know when it was put. I don't even remember answering. But at some moment, I did answer yes to someone or something. And from that hour, I was certain that existence is meaningful and that therefore, my life in self-surrender had a goal. With God's help, and inspiration, may we try uh, to make the decisions that reflect the love and the teachings of Jesus. And now let us gather around the Lord's table and ask for his inspiration and his forgiveness for the times we have failed to do that, and ask for his help in trying to do better. And as we prepare for communion, let us sing our second hymn, which is number 583.
table is not the Presbyterian church table, it is not the community church table, it is the Lord's table, and all are invited to partake in his meal. Let us bow together in prayer. <coughs> Gracious God, as we come to your table, we confess that many times we have both disappointed you and disappointed others because we have not followed your teachings of love and, and help and forgiveness and compassion and peace. We ask your forgiveness. We are grateful that you are a Father who does promise to forgive us and to help us to try again. Help us be your disciples and in a special way be with us as we share this meal remembering the depth of the love of Jesus of Nazareth. Be with us, we ask in his name. Amen. Amen. Scriptures tell us that on the night in which he was betrayed, after having supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread and blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Of me. And then in the same way, he took the cup, and he says, this cup represents my blood, which is about to be shed for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth my death until I come again. So let us share together in this meal. If you have not had communion with us before, as I mentioned uh, during the children's sermon, we have both bread and uh, unleavened uh, bread or gluten-free bread, and we also have uh, wine, which is light-colored, and grape juice, which is uh, darker-colored, and we ask you to take what's appropriate for you, and our tradition is to share these together. So let us worship God and share in his meal.
Jesus said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said to drink this in remembrance of him. And let us pray. Gracious God, you, in this sacrament, remind us that you forgive us and that you ask us to try again, to be your servants. Help us in a very confusing time and a very confusing world to show your love with a special concern for those who are poor, for those who are homeless, for those who seek life in the best sense of the word. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus and we pray together the prayer he taught us praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us.
And let us continue to worship as we share our morning gifts. your blessing upon these our gifts and upon us. May they and may we be used to spread your love. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 612. <laughs>
Now may the Lord bless us and keep us, make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us and grant us peace, now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.